Patrick Sullivan from Eben Wranglers and you're right now with fish307.com and today I want to talk to you about how to rig and use several of my soft plastic for the brand Hyperlastics. So the brand Hyperlastics is made only of soft tough material. That's a very long lasting material which have several benefits. It's buoyant, it's a bit firm, firmer than conventional soft plastics. Thanks to that, I was able to design the shapes uh, with different holes and slots, which really helps uh, in the different way we want to rig those lures. And that also helps to make the lure lasting much longer because in most cases, you don't hook the plastic itself. This said, that's a very interesting plastic also because it's natural friendly, truly. That means when the team who designed and developed this material uh, made sure that was a material that even if it was lost in the nature, left in the water, you know, that happened, you break a line, you lose a lure. Um, even after years in the nature, when it, the, the, the component will break down, there will be no component that will harm the nature. And honestly, I am a big fan of that. So there are three lures that I really want to focus on today. The dart spin, the curly min, and the dead alive swimmer. Let's check them out together and stay tuned with us because at the end of this video, um, fish307.com have a special deal for you guys for a few days. So let's start with the dart spin. This is the dart spin. So that's a soft plastic body made of that soft stuff and then I develop a kind of spring into the tail that is put into the mold so it really holds really well and really lasts long and at the very end of the tail we have a swivel and a willow blade so thanks to that we have a lure that's extremely reactive it casts very well uh, you can have all kind of retrieve because that blade uh, I designed it with a curve that works at any speed from super slow medium to super fast speed so you can work it the way you want and it pulls very little on the line so it helps you also to work on the top mid water or deep you just have to change the way you, you rig it so that is the dart spin there's uh, basically right now four different sizes starting with the three and a half four and a half five and a half up to seven inch so uh, several sizes to fit most your needs now I told you um, earlier on that that material allows me for holes and slots that helps in many regards for example the rigging or unrigging in that case well if you take a wide gap hook it's super easy you have a hole that goes through the back all the way to the belly you have a cut in the back you have also a slot underneath uh, the sheen and uh, also another hole in front of the nose so when you want to rig it look the easiest way you can rig by the nose like a typical soft plastic but here's my recommendation take the hook go through that hole that's already there turn the hook this way <laughs> there's a bass that just blew up next to me I'm coming guy, I need to shut that video first, I'm sorry, there's a priority, but I'll be back. Well, now you take the hook, uh, eye from uh, this hook, and you go into the hole that's underneath the shin, and that's it. So it's very quick, in fact, it's even faster than what I show you, um, and that's part of why it's, uh, uh, it helps that bait to last long. Now, uh, this is the pro model which is painted and we have also um, the, the, the regular models which have injected colors the pro model come um, or dependent size some come with a, a jig head some come with a white gap hook like this five and a half um, in that case when you fish with that white gap hook and you want to fish in some heavy cover like lily pads for example most of the time you can leave the hook point like this and the hook point is outside of the bait but if you have to cast in a bit heavy cover look open the back push the hook down and now the hook point is very well hidden but it's totally free to exit so when the bass comes and and attack and you know you can tell right away the hook goes up there's an excellent hooking ratio so this is one of the simplest way of using your your dart spin basically with that wide gap way to the hook now if you want to fish slower and on the very top you can have a wide gap not weighted hook so it really depends on you and the situation that's uh, one of the great ways to to, to use uh, this. Now, on jig head, for for example, this is a type of jig head that comes uh, on the pro model in uh, three and a half and four and a half. It's a round jig head, like you know many jig head are round. But what's a bit specific is 
when I design and develop uh, the, those lures, I made sure to have a, an amount of weight that was just enough to cast very well, to fish a wide range of depth, but also if you wanted to twitch it, um, there's not too much weight, it just don't go up and down, it goes sideways also, you have a great twitching action on the 3.5 and, and 4.5 and with uh, the jig head that comes out of the, the package in the pro model like this. So that's really important. Now, depend uh, on your needs, if you have bigger fish and need to fish in with heavier line, for example, you can put a bigger jig head, of course, with a, a much stronger hook, you know, it, you just uh, do what makes the most sense for your needs, of course. Now, one of the big things uh, which I love to do personally is uh, instead of having a jig head and changing my bait a lot, I prefer to have a range of jig heads and I take uh, a drop of super glue, which I put on the very nose, right here. Uh, so when I put um, uh, my dart spin or other uh, hyper elastic glue on the, on the jig head, then uh, it bonds. And really, you just need to put a very teeny drop of um, super glue. So when it bonds, now the lure Ooh, the bass are uh, frustrating sometimes, huh? <laughs> so when you put that drop of super glue, really, uh, that enhances the life of your lure a, a lot. And uh, I'm not the kind of guy who's just trying to say, hey, let's keep trashing the soft plastic. You know, if a soft plastic can last a long time, well, it's better return on your investment, the money you, you spend, your hard-earned uh, money. And that's what I do myself too. So. It's a great way and you'll see that bait really can last a lot. We have some of our guys catching, I mean, a huge amount, more than 100 bass on one dart spin. So it really lasts long. Now, when I'm talking about jig head, of course, it's also a very, very natural bait, very logical bait to use with a swim jig. Swim jig and dart spin seems to be made to be together. You know, you have the benefit of uh, the skirt and you have the blade behind. One thing I didn't mention is when that blade spins, in fact, it creates energy that translates into the tail and you have a very tight uh, vibrating action from the entire body because you see that soft plastic is not that soft. In fact, it's, it's much, much closer to a real bait fish. You know, when you touch a shiner or a shad or something like that, it's not super soft. No, it's firm. And in fact, that's what you find in that texture and that dart spin. And that's why you have such a great action because it's not just the blade that have a great action. It's really that action from the blade, the turbulence and the flash, also with the energy that translates to the body and that body vibrate. That's why it's an incredible bait. That's why uh, we had so many people from bass, to salt water, all kind of thing um, have been cooked on, on that bait. Now that's a swim jig. And it's very easy to see that also, well, <laughs> That makes sense on a flipping jig, you know, pitching, flipping, even punching, if you fish in very heavy cover, like in Florida, in many places. Um, it also makes sense because not only that that's been work when you cast and retrieve, but you know, when you cast, say, in the middle of lily pads or some branch, you can have that nice and gentle yo-yo uh, action using the fact that the line touch that branch or grass or cover and the blade work all the time. So even if you are flipping, you know, 25 yards away from you and just that in action, just the weight of the lure um, going down deep brings that blade to work and to catch bass. So it's a really great way. Now, speaking of flipping and punching and pitching, of course you can use a flipping jig or you can use a more conventional, you know, tungsten weight. And that's the same thing, you know, with that uh, white gap hook hidden inside. Great way uh, to, use, to use that bait, uh, whether you, you want to use it on a typical Texas uh, rig way. It's great if you want to fish down deep. For example, I think of Texas and place where you have enough depth and uh, you have trunks and and some other place where you have rocks for large mouth, small mouth. Great way to go fishing in there. Again, you don't need to pull much on the rod tip. That blade works all the time. Now, on the very opposite almost, I will say one thing that may surprise some of you, but well, that's a fantastic bait for the drop shot. A teeny dart spin, a three and a half like this one, or a four and a half, possibly a larger one, is fantastic on a drop shot rig because now you bring that shape that truly mimics a small bait fish and with the benefit of that blade, which again, don't need much action. You don't have to pull a lot or to jig a lot or to drag the rod sideways fast or a lot to have action. 
very little movement from uh, from the rod tip are plenty enough to, to give action to, to this bait like this and that's a very 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 good bait so again very very good bait when you want to fish drop shot so really consider giving it a try you you will not regret that i promise it to you uh, a few more ways to use that dart spin well that dart spin is really great as a trailer and when i speak as a trailer for example i mean look you know when you go on a bladed jig i mean that's just perfect because you have the great deflection from from the blade we all know that great way of catching uh, bass especially in heavy cover you have the action of the skirt and now you have the profile of the dart spin which is very realistic you know most bait fish have that kind of profile and again you have that addition of the blade in the back so as a trailer really another great great way to use this bait so i will mention of course as a trailer well a conventional spinner bait here you go you have your spinner bait and again you had this um, shape that's very realistic you had another blade in the tail if you use a larger dart spin also i really recommend you to have a trailer hook that you add on the on the main uh, hook that trailer hook will be positioned on the back of the dart spin so in that case if i want to use the same uh, spinner bait but instead of a four and a half inch if i want to put a five and a half inch i surely will in that case put that second trailer and in fact it sits very well on the back of my dart spin so it fits very well and the hooking ratio is, is better especially if you have a hook that's um, not really big and still as a trailer well <laughs> buzz bait <laughs> here's another great great use uh, for a dart spin now i want to finish on the dart spin before going to the two other baits by mentioning i personally believe in total honesty that the dart spin is the very 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 best lure you can dream of if you like to use a a rig and i'm gonna show that to you right away so for example here's the a rig with kind of middle medium light uh, wire and four and a half or is a much stronger heavy wire and stronger hooks also with five and a half so uh you you can understand easily uh, all the attraction that uh a rigs rigged with dart spin brings to bass because now you have plenty of those uh, blades and flash and again the dart spin don't pull a lot uh, when you when you retrieve them compared to a number of other baits so it's really easy to control your swimming depth for retrieve thanks to that and one thing i do a lot when i use a rigs with dart spin is most of the time i will not just go and having a, a very steady castle retrieve i will use, i will use my rod tip or my um, handle real handle to give some faster cranks times to times and that gives more of a, a school effect all the baits we have that little acceleration that's why i always make sure that my wire is quite open like that and after i catch a good fish if the wire bend back then i just bend it uh, back to the right position so to my honest point of view the very best bait you can dream of if you like to use a rigs now let's move to uh, the very next bait which i named the curly min so the curly min basically is this guy that's a minnow shape body and a curly tail well thanks to the use of that uh, soft tough material it's brilliant so i have not only a great curly tail action and we know there's plenty curly tail that have a great action on the market but it's brilliant so for example if i use it as a swim bait like this with a weighted white gap hook when i will cast and retrieve i will have that great swim action great but because the buoyancy of the body and the right positioning of my weight i also have a side to side body motion so now you have also kind of a minnow action on the body plus the tail action and when you let it drop on the on the bottom so first on the drop itself if you if you want to pitch it or flip it they're just the right weight and the right position on the weight that comes from the package to have the great swim action on the drop so many bites happen simply by you know letting it fall but if you let's go all the way to the bottom it will land 100 percent of the time like this and stay like that with the tail up so you can make pause and you know especially big bass sometimes are very finicky and they need that extra time and attention you need to leave them and let them look at the bait and after you know sometimes 30 seconds or one minute even if it's a big fish you know i'll give all the time it takes to have that fish uh, turn on then i i give that little pull on my rod tip or a little twitch reacts right away now that's if i use a weighted white gap book but if i use now a not weighted white gap book 
now I got a floating top water soft plastic curly tail. Literally that bait sits on the top, floats, and when you retrieve it, you have that great swim action. Uh, if you use the not, uh, not painted model, they make perfectly a weight on the top where half of the tail is outside and make a great weight. A uh, great wake, sorry, that's perfect. That's really fantastic fishing, for example, in places like that where you see lily pads around some branch. It's just perfect uh, for top water bites, very weedless. Also, that bait have that deep cut in the back, have two holes underneath the shin. Uh, typically, you want to use a not weighted hook uh, with the hook exiting the first hole, but if you have a weighted hook, you want it to exit the second hole. I made those holes based on where what were the best position for the best action, depending if it was to be used on top as a floating bait or uh, fishing more mid-water as a, a swim bait. Now, the very next and very uh, logical way to use that is, look at that, as a Carolina rigged bait. Because, yeah, you know, we all have worms, soft plastic worms in our, in our box, and of course we all know that catch bass, but here's what it is now. You have Again, a profile that's much more realistic to, to a bass because, well, bass mostly are fish eaters. There's very rarely a true worm on the bottom of, of any lake or river for them to find and swallow. Uh, we have the great action that's very proven for, you know, since 1974 was the invention of the soft plastic uh, curly tail. So we, we know millions and tens of millions of bass have been cocked on this kind of shape. But what is the huge benefit is that when you drag your weight on the bottom, a typical soft plastic a worm will drag on the floor. And that's okay, of course, catch fish. In the case of the curly men, it has just enough pure and see that the weight can be dragging on the bottom and the curly men will be working and swimming right above the bottom, a few inches above, helping the bass to see that prey from a much uh, uh, long or far away distance driving for more bites. So great, great way to use the curly mane. It's a six inch bait. Really, I love, I do really love using that like this. And uh, to fish in a, finish on that bait also, well, using that with uh, a bullet weight as a Texas rig for flipping, punching, or working on the bottom. Again, if you have uh, logs, if you have racks, that's a perfect way to work. And remember that with the BONC, when you make a pause, that bait will float like that. So it's very highly visible for the bass, like a, a, a bait feeding on bottom. Excellent, excellent bait. I really strongly recommend you to give this bait a try. You won't be disappointed. Now, let's go with the last of the three baits I want to introduce to you today, guys, which is called the Dead Alive Swimmer. The Dead Alive Swimmer is a swim bait that comes with a pack of two bodies and two hooks, wide gap hooks, one of them not weighted, one of them weighted. So the not weighted one, well, when I designed it, my goal was really to mimic a truly dying bait fish. And you know, many lures on market claim, well, it mimics a dying bait fish. Well, honestly speaking, I've seen a number of times a dying bait fish on the water, and I guess many of you, most of you have seen also that. Well, a dying bait fish don't run fast sideways. No, a dying bait fish gently swim and then floats back most of the time sideways. That's exactly what does that guy. He floats back like this. So you swim it super slowly, he floats and swim just underneath the top. And you kill it. Well, that's the right use of that word, killing it. He floats like that. You twitch it, he dives a little bit, twitch a couple of times and make a pause and he floats back. So you can swim it. You can twitch it. You can make those long pauses that bass, especially the big ones, love in a number of cases. So that's what you do just with using that uh, wide gap, not weighted hook. Now, when you use the weighted hook, with the weighted hook, you have the benefit of a bait that is now killed. So it's better for typic more typical cast and retrieve swim action, but it's still fantastic when it comes to twitching and jerking it and killing it. In that case, thanks to the weight, it will not float to the top, but it will sink, dive down, land on the floor 100% of the time laying like that. That means once the weight touch the bottom, the bait stay exactly in that position and that's excellent for bass. Excellent. So you can kill it, pause it, leave it like this 10-15 seconds, swim it again, do a few cranks, maybe five feet, kill it again, let that bait pause on the bottom, I'm coming for you. 
well, wait a bit, twitch it a couple of times on the bottom, really fantastic. One thing I want to show you is about the rigging of that bait. There's, like all my uh, hyperelastics of plastic, there's already holes and slots in different positions. So you just, most of the time, you don't have to hook the bait itself, you just have to follow the slots. Of course, you can go through the nose. There's a hole in the nose, a hole underneath the shin, and a hole that goes through right here. So you can go through the nose. Okay, but here's the easiest way. Because I have put a cover here on the back of the back to keep the hook the most in place. Why? Because it's a perfect bait when you want to skip underneath docks and branches. Because it's very flat. You know, when you want to skip a stone, you don't take a round ball shaped stone, right? You take a flat one. Well, that's the same thing with this guy. So this is very flat, it skips very well. That's why I wanted the hook to stay very well um, uh, on the back. So when you skip, there's little risk for the hook to escape. And it's very uh, snugless if you skip like that underneath branch or dock. So look, the easiest and best way to rig it, very simple. You take the hook eye, you go on the cut in the back, underneath that little cover, and you feel, it's very easy, you feel the, uh, the hole, you see that goes through, and now you go like this. Now the hook on the back is perfectly positioned, as you can see, in the RSS, and that cover on the top. And now you take the front, and like the dart spin earlier on, you take the, eye, the hook eye, and you go in the hole that's already underneath the shin, and here you go, your bait is ready to cast and to be used. One thing is about the, the, the fin, you see, it don't look like the cool, good looking that typically fins have on soft plastic. It is on purpose. It was very easy. In fact, my very first prototype have a very nice looking fin. But again, by thinking of my experience of watching um, dying bait fish, be fish that have been injured by being swallowed by a bass and being able to escape, most of the time they lose some scale and their fins are damaged. And that's what I mimic here. So I mimic a damaged uh, tail. So when you make those paws in the water and you gently twitch or shake the rod tip, those very tiny piece which uh, mimics perfectly a damaged tail, well, will have just a tiny bit of action. In fact, here I don't look too good because that material is a little bit sticky, it's normal, but once it's in the water, the piece don't stick to each other, it's really much more uh, lifelike, you will see by yourself. Now, uh, next, Texas rig. So uh, I love to use it as Texas rig because, well, again, most of the time, most of the year, in most places, bait fish are number one preys. That's the main feed for bass. So using a uh, dead alive swimmer, I like to, to make a loop. It's not an obligation, but I personally like to make a loop. I put a very teeny bead and then a bit bigger one, and then I put my weight. I may or may not put a second bead and a uh, stop. So I can choose to have the weights staying together like this with my uh, dead life swimmer, or I can choose to have more freedom, which for example is good if I want to leave it. I mean, hit the bottom and give some free line and slowly float up like this until it's uh, the stop. That's a great way to go targeting your bass, really. Give it a try, the dead life swimmer on a Texas rig like that. It's perfect for pitching and flipping and just even cast and retrieve. I mean, you can do a lot of things by rigging it like that. Now, uh, this bait, the Dead Life Swimmer, is also a very natural bait for Carolina rigging. Yeah, because, well, most of plastic baits swim, uh, plastic baits that have no paddle tail, um, <clears throat> are not really meant to be used like that. They're meant to be used directly on a jig head, on white caput, cast and retrieve. But in fact, on a Carolina rig, that's where you have the very best swim action of that bait, in fact. You use the not weighted hook, you have your weight, of course the weight depends on where you fish, how deep, or is it, you have a lot of wind, there's several factors, which I'm sure you already know, it's not specific to that bait. And now you can cast, when you retrieve the lure, have the best, most beautiful swim action it can deliver is in, on that very rig. When you make a pause, it slowly floats up like a dying bait fish, but 15 or 20 feet deep if you want. And every time you give a little twitch or a pull on the rod, it goes from that position to swim and go back behind the weight. And it's never exactly at the level of the bait, it's always, of the lure, sorry, of the weight, <laughs> is always a bit higher than that, which means if you drag the weight on the bottom, you know that your dead alive swimmer will swim a few inches above the bottom, which is really great. And to finish, I wanna show 
uh, uh, another rig for, for that bait, which is great when you have more finicky bass. Well, drop shot rig, you're dead alive swimmer. You have that hole underneath the shin, but the hook inside that hole go all the way to the top of the head. And now here you go. So you can have very little movement to keep that bait horizontal, to shake it because it's jointed. Every time you give a very teeny uh, rod tip shake, the entire body have a beautiful vibration that's extremely attractive to the bass. So that's a swim bait, that's a drop shot bait, that's a dead alive swimmer. We just talked about the hyper elastics lures, the dart spin, the curly min, the dead alive swimmer. I'm Patrick Seville, their designer with a of Anglers. And today we made that video with fish307.com and there's a special deal for a few days, buy three and get a fourth bait. So go and check on their website I guess there's a link coming soon. Thank you. I wish the very best for all of you with those confinement times. I hope you can go fishing and if you can't enjoy spending time video and fishing, thinking about all your good fishing memories and on your hooks and be ready for when we'll be all free to go back on the water. Thank you. Bye-bye and stay safe.